Okay, so we just went through an example where we saw that there did seem to be a correlation between the two variables we were studying. But now I got to give you the standard warning that correlation is not necessarily causation. Just when there's a correlation between two variables, sometimes that's because one of them is affecting or causing or influencing the other one, but not always. There might be another explanation for why the two things tend to appear together. One example that I've heard is that higher, well, is that uh, higher sales of ice cream tend to correlate with higher numbers of deaths by drowning. When people buy a lot of ice cream, lots of people drown. When not, as many, when not as much ice cream is sold, not as many people die from drowning. Does that mean that the, the ice cream causes the drowning? Probably not. It's probably that they're both related to what time of the year it is. And that in summer months, people eat more ice cream. And that's also when they spend more time in the water, in the lakes, in the swimming pools, and so forth. So there may be other things that are lurking behind the scenes that are causing both of your variables to be affected, even though those two variables aren't directly affected to one another. Okay, on to another example. Another one that I stole from the book, this is about egg production. Recent agricultural data showed that the number of eggs produced and the price received per dozen for a given year, based on the following data for a random selection of states, can it be concluded that a relationship exists between the number of eggs produced and the price per dozen? So here we have six pairs of numbers. In each pair of numbers, the first number, x, is how many millions of eggs were produced in that state in that year. And the second number is the price for a dozen eggs in that state in that year. So like when 957 million eggs were produced, a dozen eggs cost 77 cents. And oh, look at here, here's a, a small number relatively, uh, 119 million eggs were produced. And there, the price for a dozen eggs was $1.08. So just from those two numbers, it kind of looks like bigger Xs go with smaller Ys, and smaller Xs go with bigger Ys. Is that true in general? Is the price lower when more eggs are produced and higher when not as many eggs are produced? Well, let's find out. So if you look at the notes, or if you look at the homework that I'm going to be asking you to do for this section, I'm asking you to do five things. Thing number one, or thing letter A, is to draw a scatter plot for the variables. So take your data points and produce a scatter plot. So here it's going to have six dots, one for each pair of numbers. And you can draw it by hand, or you can use something like Excel to generate it for you. So either way, you're going to have six dots. One of them is going to be X is approximately 957, so just a little to the left of 1,000. And Y is going to be 77, so right about there. So here is... It's a little faint and a little squished down, but there is the scatter plot. These one, two, three, four, five, six dots show where these six data points are. And it does kind of look like the ones on the left are higher up and the ones on the right are further down, which would look like a negative relationship. So if there is much of a relationship here. It looks like it's a negative one, meaning that as the X's get bigger, the Y's get smaller. 
and vice versa. The second thing, letter B, that I would ask you to do is to find the value of the correlation coefficient. So you can do that using that big ugly formula and plug in 5,709 for the sum of the x's and 5.236 for the sum of the y's and so on. Or you can ask Excel to do it for you with that C-O-R-R-E-L function, or you can ask your graphing calculator to get it for you, but it should come out to be negative 0.832601, or about negative 0.833 for the correlation coefficient. Step three, or C, the, the C thing that I would ask you to do is to state the hypotheses. And this is easy because it's always going to be the same thing for these correlation problems. <clears throat> the null hypothesis is always going to be, remember what I said? Rho equals zero. And the alternative hypothesis is always going to be Rho does not equal zero. So that's always going to be your null and alternative hypotheses for correlation situations when you're testing the significance of the correlation coefficient. D, test the significance of the correlation coefficient at alpha equals 0 0.05 using table I. Okay, do you remember what we got for the correlation coefficient? It was a negative number. But here we need the absolute value of that number. So the absolute value of R was 0 0.832601. So when you're doing this, you're working with the absolute value of R. If R happened to be a negative number, don't worry about the negative here, just take the positive absolute value and use that in the test where you're comparing it to the number on the table. So the absolute value of R is 0 0.832601. And the table I critical value is, do you remember how many data points we had? There were six data points. So degrees of freedom is gonna be six minus two, which is four. And it says that alpha is 0 0.05. So the number on the table for four degrees of freedom, alpha equals 0 0.05. That number is 0.811. So this tells us what to do. We're supposed to reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of R is greater than the value given in the table. Is it? Yes. So we reject the null hypothesis. And then E, give a brief relationship, or sorry, this should say a brief description of the type of relationship. Assume all assumptions are met. So we're going to say one of these three things. Now, remember, we rejected the null hypothesis. That means there is sufficient evidence to say that there's a linear relationship. So it's either A or B. Did we say that it was a positive relationship or a negative relationship? Well, remember R was a negative number. We were looking at the absolute value, but before we took the absolute value, we got a negative 0.8 something. So that's a negative relationship. So our conclusion is there is sufficient evidence to say that there is a negative linear relationship between the number of eggs produced and the price per dozen. Okay, let's work through one more example. The number of calories and the number of milligrams of cholesterol for a random sample of fast food chicken sandwiches from seven restaurants are shown here. Is there a relationship between the variables? So you're a researcher, you went out to seven different fast food restaurants, got a chicken sandwich for each one, and you measured how many calories that chicken sandwich had, and how many milligrams of cholesterol it had. 
So for each chicken sandwich, we've got a pair of numbers, the number of calories and the cholesterol. First, draw the scatter plot for your variables. There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. Like for example, one of those dots is gonna be over 300 and up 50, which would be right there. So when you put all the dots in place, there's that one, there's all the others. So there's our scatter plot with those seven dots. And they don't look to me like they're lining up real well. If there's a relationship at all, it looks like it's a positive one, but they're, they're not doing a real good job of, of lining up in a straight line. Okay, B, find the value of the correlation coefficient. I won't take you through the details, but you can do it using that formula or Excel or a graphing calculator or something else, but it should come out to be 0.725199. So that's your R, your correlation coefficient. C, state the hypotheses. They're always gonna be the same, remember what they are. The no hypothesis is Rho equals zero, and the alternative hypothesis is Rho is not equal to zero. Now D, test the significance of the correlation coefficient at alpha equals 0 0.05 using table I. So the absolute value of the correlation coefficient is, we were just looking at it, remember what it was? 0.725199. And the table I critical value is, see if you can find it, alpha is 0 0.05, so look in that column. We had seven data points, so your degrees of freedom here would be five. So the number from the table is 0.754. So what do we say here? Remember, we're supposed to reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of R is greater than the value given in the table. Is it? Well, no, it's not. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. Just like the hypothesis testing we were doing before, in this step, we always either say reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. It's one or the other of those two things. And now, part E, give a brief relationship, or should say brief description of the type of relationship. Well, since we did not reject the null hypothesis, all we can say is there is not sufficient evidence to say that there is a linear relationship between calories and cholesterol. There might be, there might not be, but just from our sample of seven chicken sandwiches, we did not see enough evidence to be able to say that in general, chicken sandwiches that are higher in calories are also higher in cholesterol. Okay, that's it for section 10.1. The homework from 10.1 is in two parts. There's an online Canvas quiz, like a lot of the homework has been, and then there's also a couple of correlation problems that I want you to work through, same steps A, B, C, D, and E, as what we were doing in those last couple examples. And if you want to use some sort of technology like Excel or a graphing calculator or some other app or software to help you with those, you can. Or you can just work them out yourself just with pencil and paper and the formula. And then next time, the last thing we're going to cover this semester is section 10.2. We'll talk about regression, which is, okay, if there is a correlation, that means there is a relationship between the variables, then how would you describe that relationship with an actual formula or an equation that tells how X and Y are related to one another? So that's what's coming up in the next section.